welcome everybody to episode uh, four of the Dino Life on Water podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Dino Halsey, and we're here in my basement, uh, where as you can see behind me, I've got paddle boards, skateboards, um, boogie boards, um, you name it down here when it comes to life on water. Anyways, what is today? Today is um, February... Third, yeah, February third, two thousand twenty-four. So holy cow, January just flew by, didn't it? Talk about cold though. About two weeks ago, my gosh, it was negative twenty as the actual temp. I think negative fifteen. Like it was really, really cold. I mean, for about a week straight, we were in the negatives, um, if not with wind chills in the negatives, and it was pretty awful. Um, had a pretty crazy snowstorm, um, like I talked about in my last. Uh, podcast and um now on the flip side <coughs> excuse me uh like i said it's february 2nd and almost all the snow is gone um i think we were in the upper 50s two days ago today let's see we are in the um it's 41 right now but checking the forecast uh for the quad cities where i'm from davenport or uh, iowa illinois davenport Rock Island area, Moline, Bettendorf. Um, today is the highest 46. We'll see if we hits that. Tomorrow's 50. Um, midweek, we're still in the upper 50s. And then looks like by next weekend, here in the Quad Cities, um, we're back in the 40s. And then the following Monday, looks like we're in the 30s. So. Looks like February could be a roller coaster ride when it comes to weather. And that's just Iowa in general. It seems like Every February, we get like this bout of warm weather, and we think, ah, oh, the, the weather's changing for the season. And usually, I was talking to uh, my friend Phil yesterday. He said every year on his birthday, which is beginning of April, it snows. And uh, April's a weird month. It seems like April goes from snowing, which it has, to end of the month, um, you know, nice weather where you're wearing a T-shirt and shorts outside. So, it, But then, again... May has been cold too. I mean, I've had we've had Mays that are still like in the fifties, um, you know, upper fifties on some days too. So it's just really a hit and miss. Um, but fingers crossed. I think the groundhog did or did not. I'm not sure. Did the groundhog see its shadow? I thought I saw something about spring. Uh, let's see here. We'll go to Google. Uh, did the groundhog? see his shadow um it says the groundhog did not see his shadow predicting that there will be an early spring all right love to hear that um so we'll see if the groundhog was right for 2024 um so far so good another cool thing is uh i believe all the ice has almost melted um i'm not 100 percent sure on that but I would assume after the few warm days, that it's got to be either melted or close. So definitely going to be doing a definitely going to be doing a spot check here soon around the Quad Cities and see what is open water for me to um, get back out on the water and paddle and have some fun. Um, so I would imagine it, that this might be the earliest I've ever got to paddleboard in the Quad Cities. Uh, we'll see. Hopefully, it stays that way. But um, You'll see on my social media um, what I find out here, and I'm sure a few days. So, anyways, um, how's the weather in your area? I know that, you know, down south, obviously, it's still pretty warm. On the west coast, it's still pretty warm. Um, I've seen the east coast go up and down. I'd say it's pretty much, <coughs> excuse me, um, throat's getting dry. Probably the Midwest, that's the most, you know, fluctuating in temperatures. So I just did watch um, Cam Hill on his Chill Adventures vlog. If you haven't checked him out, definitely check him out on YouTube. Uh, he's part of Team Dino Life on Water, so definitely check him out. Uh, him and I plan on doing some, uh, hopefully some great things this summer together, and uh, we will bring that to your attention here in the future. But uh, De Cam Hill's new vlog, he was, um, I think he just did it like a couple days ago, like maybe February, yesterday? Day before possibly 
And um, at one point in his video, it was completely like frozen over. Like there was ice all over the beach, went out pretty far into the water. It looked like lighthouses were frozen. And then by the end of his log vlog, um, there was no ice. Like it was just beach. I mean, there was a little bit, but like definitely you could get back out there. So um, I would imagine possibly the rest of the Greg Lakes are that way. I don't know about Lake Superior or maybe up in northern Lake Michigan. But uh, that's great news. Um, I actually actually contemplated going up there this weekend. Um, I was going to take my family up to Chinatown in Chicago um, and have some fun and try and get out on Montrose Beach in Chicago. Um, I frequent that a lot, and um, it's a fun beach to paddle on and surf on um, right right in the middle of downtown Chicago on the north side. Um, if you've never been and you're going to visit Chicago sometime soon or uh, the Great Lakes, and you are into water sports, uh, definitely check out the beaches in Chicago. There's a lot of cool ones on some of them. Not so cool, but definitely Montrose Beach. You can do it all, and it's free to park, um, and it's huge. So you shouldn't have any trouble any part of, any day of the week trying to park there and getting out on the water as long as it's not frozen. Like I said, I don't believe it is. Uh, if you are into paddle boarding, there is a paddle boarding rental service i believe on north beach or or on montrose beach but i know you can get a hold of them it's a uh, chicago sup um they are on instagram i believe they they might be on facebook and uh, you can probably check out their website um they rent um paddle boards right there on the shore and um i'm just trying to think i'm not sure if they're on north beach or if they're on montrose i think they're on north beach but i'm, I'm sure that you can still pick up a paddle board and it's not that far a distance if you rented a a paddleboard on either beach you could paddle from one to the other i mean if it's not that far so um especially in if you were doing it for the day or for the afternoon um you definitely could do it depending on the weather and depending on the tide uh that could play into that but if it's flat and it's warm and you want to get on the water and try paddle boarding in chicago definitely hit up hit up chicago sup um they will hook you up um so yeah i was going to do that but plans fell through um, actually I'm busy tomorrow night, so I didn't want to take a chance of something happening if I went out of town. Um, big Florida trips coming up in a couple weeks. Um, we're leaving, I believe on a Friday, like the 21st and maybe that Friday or the 22nd on that Saturday and, um, taking my wife and daughter to, um, Disney world. Uh, we're going to go to the magic kingdom and then, uh, hit up, um, Hollywood studios. And then from there, we've got some reservations up in Panama City at a hotel called the Sugar Sands Hotel in Laguna Beach. Um, it's just west of Panama City. Um, it's a little, it's a lot more quiet, um, um, and it's just a really cool. I've been there before. I've actually, been to Laguna Beach a couple times to stay, and it's um, it's a lot easier to get around in Laguna than it is Panama City. Not that Panama City is extremely hard, but if it's busy there, it is. Um, so yeah, we're going to Laguna Beach. Um, and we're going to be there Wednesday through Saturday. Um, I think that's like the 28th through the second. Um, so if you want to come paddle with me, if you're in the area, um, and, um, you want to come hang out and talk or whatever, I will be there. Um, I'm not sure what all of our plans are while we're there. Definitely probably some R and R after, uh, the two busy days, or I should say probably two and a half busy days, uh, down in Orlando at Disney world. Definitely need some beach time and we're crossing our fingers i know that the panhandle um weather can, can be iffy in the winter time i mean not like here in iowa but definitely down there as far as like what to pack what to take with us i mean i think no matter what i'm definitely going to take my 3-2 wetsuit um yeah i just you can use that in 70 degree water it does not going to matter but i'd rather be comfortable out there in the water than not so i think i'm going to do that not sure if i'm going to take booties or gloves but it i guess i'll just I'll keep checking in the next two weeks. I think the golf temperature right now, um, if you guys ever use Surf Captain, Surf Captain's a great app for your phone. You can pretty much put where your location is and it'll tell you where like the nearest, you know, break is. Or if you want to know what the beach temp, like the water temperature is at any beach around. I mean, I this is what I use for everything. Um, I know you guys probably can't see that because of the light, but anyways, I'm going to check. Like right now, Chicago North Side, which would be where Montrose Beach is at, Water temp's 37 degrees, and it recommends that you use a 5-4 wetsuit uh, with either 5 or 7 milliliter or more um, 
gloves and boots. Um, right now it's 30 degrees there, which I was, well, that's another reason why I kind of hesitated because I've talked about this before. I don't have a five, four wetsuit or a six, five wetsuit. Um, I rock a three, two or a three mil and, um, Plans are still to get one of those, hint, hint, to uh, Hyperflex or Host Stevie or Seaskin, who's um, not sure if I'm still sponsored by them or not. I've sent them a few emails. Um, I've asked them in the past about if they were going to make a cold water suit. Um, I know they're busy. I think one of their reps that actually I've talked to is on vacation right now. But if I am on a Seaskin, yes, you can guarantee I will try and uh, see if they have a cold water suit. I'd love to have it before... Um, March, but you know, if not, whatever. Um, so that's the plan anyways. So anything you want to know about your local break or a break or a vacation you might be going to, you want to check the beach. You just have to go to surf, surf captain, uh, for an app on your phone, possibly I'm sure online too. And, uh, like right now, like I said, Chicago, uh, Montrose beach, um, 30 degrees, Six foot at two seconds, which basically is no waves, flat. Um, water temp, like I said, 37 degrees. And like okay, we already went over the wetsuit thickness. It actually tells me the swell. Like right now at 2 p.m., it says flat and choppy. Um, but I can go all the way till Wednesday. I am i don't pay for their pro. I only get five days. If you do their pro um, and you pay for it, you get 16 days out. Um but as far as the Great Lakes, like on Montrose Beach from now until Wednesday, it is completely flat. I mean, there is no waves whatsoever uh, coming. Doesn't mean it's 100% accurate, but Surf Captain, from what I've been told, is the most accurate. I mean, I don't get a chance to use this this often because I don't have waves where I'm at. I mean, like I said, I got to tra- travel to the Great Lakes. Um, that's the closest surf break I'm going to get. So I just don't. And I don't get up there that often between my schedule at work, uh, home life, and um, just, you know, I'm not able to do that. I'd like to do it more. and we've, I've talked about that as far as the summer and coming up here real soon, which I do want to make happen. It's just um, I got to keep working at it. So I would love to be able to go up to the Great Lakes once a month and see all my friends around there that have supported me and sent positive messages. And um, I would love to hang out Um more often than I did. I don't know if I even got up to the Great Lakes once last year. I can't, I don't think I did, but I would, I kept talking about it. I kept saying, hey, let's go up to Lake Michigan. Hey, let's go, uh, let's just drive to Lake Superior and check it out. You know, those are probably the two closest uh, Great Lakes to me. Even make, maybe, maybe Lake Huron's the same because I think it's about seven and a half hours from here to Lake Superior and about, it's about seven, eight hours to Cleveland and that's into Ohio, but I think maybe the same distance to like, uh, I think maybe Bay city or Port Huron, I don't know, somewhere on the, uh, East Michigan border. Um, so those three great lakes are the closest, obviously Lake Michigan, like I've said, is the closest to me. It's three hours, you know, maybe two and a half. If I really pushed it, hell, maybe two hours if I really, really pushed it and wanted to get a speeding ticket or be, you know, but, um, I think the closest beach actually is Montrose Beach, Montrose Avenue Beach, Avenue Beach in Chicago. From my doorstep to there is, oh, I think about 185 miles. I guess I could look it up on my phone real quick, but um, let's see here. Google Maps does wonders for me. I always, I'm always trying to look at a destination or something and see how far it is for me, and I contemplate in my head how much gas it's going to take and how much, you know, all this stuff, but let's see here. So we'll go my location to Montrose, Montrose Beach. Um, right from my doorstep to there um, is 194 miles. I think that's the closest one. Um, I'm not sure if I could try Whiting, Indiana. That's another cool beach on the south side of Lake Michigan. Um, let me see here. It's almost identical. It says 187 to Whiting, and Whiting is the town of Whiting, but Whiting Beach, I think it has another name, but I think it's, anyways, been there. It's about the same exact distance. So, that being said, 
I could be in Montrose Avenue Beach or Whiting um, in Chicago, Illinois, or Whiting, Indiana, Whiting Beach, um, even the Portage Lakefront probably in around the same distance. Um, in my experience, for me, if you are thinking about going, even Kenosha, I think you could make, I think it's about 200 miles from here, the Quad Cities. But to be completely honest, I would rather take the traffic if you left early enough um, into Montrose Beach, like taking 55, um, 50, taking 55 north to Chicago, then taking, I can't think what the highway is. Uh, it's, I think it's, you take I-80 most of the way, then I think it turns into I-90, but there's like a, it's like a place there at the Indiana, Illinois, uh, border. Um, is it in, yeah, in Illinois, Indiana, Michigan border? It's right there. Like they all come kind of not together, but it's just, it's super, super busy. And the traffic can be horrendous right there. Actually, the traffic gets really, really bad. Um, right about when you hit Joliet, the, if you're headed that way, to go to that beach from this area or from west to the east coast and you go through there i'm just going to forewarn you the traffic is very very fast from joliet past that border into indiana or into michigan um and then it slows down a bit but it is extremely quick through there so and the traffic can be three i don't know if it's three or four lanes maybe it's five lanes um you're going quick and it can come to a dead stop real quick so definitely be careful if you're ever headed that way um, the Kenosha drive for me is pretty, pretty simple. I mean, you take 88 to 39 North and then you just get, I can't think what highway it is, but then you get off and you go into Kenosha. That's the easiest way. Um, like I said, to Montrose beach from here, you take I 80 West or East to, um, I always take 55 North into downtown, shoot up Lake shore drive till I find Montrose, you know, you pass, um, you pass down downtown completely and you're heading towards uh the north side and it's not too far once you pass downtown um or main downtown to uh that beach um so it's really not that bad a drive but i will tell you if you do plan on going to montrose avenue beach in chicago um i would definitely try and get there between the hours of like uh 10 to like 3 because if you're going through that morning commute in Chicago and it's during the week, you're going to be in traffic. And on top of that, if it's during the week and you're coming out of Chicago trying to get back down 55 South um, to get out of town, the traffic can be gridlock. Um, and I've been in it and it's taken me a long time to get out of Chicago. So if you're shooting between 10 and 3, I think, during the week or weekends are different because nobody really works. Um, it's just not nearly as busy. You can get through a lot faster in the weekend. You're going to get in traffic no matter what in downtown Chicago. I don't care what day of the week it is. It just depends on how bad it's going to be. I mean, from off of getting off 55 down Lake shore, going North, you're going to hit traffic. I mean, there's lights, there's, it's just, there's, you know, millions of people that live there. So, um, anyways, so as I was saying, let's go back to the Panama city thing. Uh, Panama City is in the Gulf, uh, sits on the Gulf of Mexico, and it's in the northern part of Florida. It's probably the last city in the big city or bigger city in the panhandle um, before you get down into main Florida. Um, I guess the major city would be Tallahassee, but it doesn't sit on the Gulf. Um, it's up in the middle of the middle of the northern part of Florida, but um, it actually sits lower than like the rest of the Gulf Coast, like where you have uh, Pensacola, Navarre, um, Oscar, Okaloosa Island, Destin, um, you got 30A, and then the, it drops down a little more. You hit Laguna Beach, then into Panama City, Florida. And there are a couple other towns that are in there, but I don't think they're not nearly as big as Panama City is. Um, so, it, like I said, it'd be the last big, big city on the Gulf before you get into, uh, so you shoot down 98 south and you um run into like clearwater beach and, and um tampa and stuff like that um i'm gonna go to surf captain here and let's see here i'm gonna put in the united states and then we're gonna go to no we're not going to the west coast we're going to the southeast coast uh, let's see here. 
West Florida. All right. Panhandle, Alabama. It has all the counties. Um, and Panama City sits in Bay County. And right now, the weather today in Panama City Beach, Florida, is 61 degrees. Um, they're calling for two-foot waves at four seconds. So that's like nonstop. And the water temp right now there is a brisk 58 degrees. Um, and it says you should be wearing a 4-3 wetsuit with three millimeter gloves um, to be comfortable, to have a good day, to have a good day out in the water um, today. So, you know, 58 isn't, you know, 38 or 37, but it's cold. You know, you're not going to go down there and go swimming in your board shorts in 58 degree water. I mean, it's cold. So definitely would rather have a good time and have a wetsuit on because we're only, like I said, what's today the fourth and I leave on the 22nd. So, well, I guess I won't get there till the 28th. So that's 24, 24 days. In three weeks' time, that golf is not going to warm up 10 degrees. It's just not going to happen. So um, I definitely will be at least taking my 3-2 with me just to be sure. Um, I do have a 3-2 jacket and a 3-2 pair of pants as well, and I think a 2-millimeter vest. Um, I do have 3-millimeter boots and 7-millimeter boots and gloves as well but i think i'm gonna have to take my full suit and not my jacket pants suit i don't know i just i'd rather have more fun and not worry about being cold than um or be protected and not have to worry about not having fun so um that will be the plan unless anything's changed i do plan on on i do plan on um lost my train of thought what was i gonna say um, I don't know. We got some dead air here. I had, it was there and it, you guys ever have that happen to you? Like you have something you want to talk about and all of a sudden it's just boom, gone. Like I don't even, how does that happen? Like, is it because you're not really in focus of what else you want to talk about? Um, but yeah, that's, hmm. Anyways. I'll definitely be taking my, where's, where's my hand here? My eye rocker, um, 11 foot all around ultra board. Um, if you are looking to get into paddle boarding or want a new paddle board or whatever, or want to know about paddle boarding, definitely hit up eye rocker. I think it's irockersup.com. Um, they will hook you up with what you need, what size you need. They've got great deals. They've got clearance boards right now. I think I think you can pick a board up for like two hundred bucks right now. I mean, brand new, and I mean that's a, that's a great deal. I mean, I think it's just like the white. What are we at here? Just like this white one, this nautical behind me. I believe it's similar to that. I don't think it's a package. You do get fins. I think I'm pretty sure you get fins, but you'll have to buy a paddle separate. Um, but even so, I mean, you can buy a paddle for. 50 bucks, 100 bucks. I mean, so for, for, you know, you won't get the bag to put it in, but if, if you don't care about that, like I said, but they also are running deals, I think, with possibly even something like three or $400. Um, well, heck, let's just check and find out. Um, we got about um, five more minutes before we got to call it quits on this podcast. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the content so far. Um, Let's see here. We're going to go to irocker.com. And, um, yeah, right now on irockersup.com, you can get this board behind me, this white one on the floor, nautical 10, six. It's an inflatable, just like the one behind me. Um, comes in four different colors and wow, there's only two left in stock. So, if you want this deal, definitely hit them up. But it comes with, um, I believe, here, see what's inside the box. You get a board. You get a three-piece fiberglass paddle. You get a hand pump. Um, you get a leash, a travel backpack, three fins, and a repair kit, uh, which includes uh, patches, the valve wrench, and some glue in case you put a hole in it. Um, you can't beat that. Like 300 bucks, and I'm not I'm telling you here. They are one of the best paddle brands in the world. Um, 
I rode both of these boards in all sorts of conditions, ran into rocks, um, sticks. I mean, the, the lake I go to, Lost Grove Lake, the most is full of trees that are cut off in the water and sticks and debris and nothing. Never had a problem with it. Um, so don't listen to all the uh, message boards or whatever. You know, never had a problem. I've surfed both of these boards before. Both of those boards have been in waves and surfed with them, had an absolute bl absolute blast. So you can surf with them. Um, you can just chill and lay down. Like I said, they're 11 foot long. So if you just want to go and hang out by a tree or just sit on the, you know, sit out in the water, what better way to do it than on a paddle board? And like I said, so yeah, 300 bucks right now, $299 is that whole kit um, for the nautical. Like I said, they're great boards. Um, you can get an iRocker cruiser, cruiser board kit right now for $399. Just a step up from the nautical. Awesome board. Um, and if you want to spend, you know, a little bit more, you can get the iRocker all around, which is right above that. That's $529 for everything. And heck, you can even get their black fin model on clearance for $449. And all really good boards and you get packages with all of them. You get everything you need to go paddle boarding is in, is in the box. You are out on the water as soon as you get it. And you know, the best thing about inflatable paddle boards is, is there's no room involved. Like when I was using a hard board and I love hard boards, don't get me wrong. If you have the ability to carry one and you have awesome, you know, I'd like to have a hard board in my quiver behind me. Definitely. Um, but anyways, the benefit to an inflatable is you can see the backpacks behind me. There's one of them for the IROC, for the, uh, IROC or ultra. And then that, that crap, that one, that one there is for the nautical that's on the floor. Um, you get both of those, all of it with it. And you can just throw it in the back of your car, throw it in the seat and all the stuff goes inside of the bag. Um, you can buy an electric pump to where you don't even have to use the the hand pump. Um, it'll take like five minutes and it pumps up. I actually have two of them um, right here with me at my house. And ever since then, I that's all I use. I mean, it's so quick and convenient, but it doesn't matter. You can use the hand pump and literally if you, you can pump on up in about 10 minutes, you know, and it's done. So if you want to go hiking with it, put it on your back, go find some lake in the middle of nowhere that's, you know, just untouched. There's not a better way than having an inflatable paddleboard, you know, I mean, especially if you're going to have to hike to your destination and go paddling. So, um, definitely check out irockersup.com. They've been a great sponsor of mine and, um, we are going to have another great year, um, this year, looking forward to it and looking forward to working with them, um, throughout forever. You know, I don't, I don't, wouldn't, wouldn't change anything a bit. I absolutely love the company and, um, Looking forward to making them a bigger and better company throughout the years. Um, definitely going to work on my own brand uh, here coming up. I'm um, going to buy get some new merch, and I will definitely show that to you when I get it all done. Um, so if you're interested in some Dino Life on Water uh, merch, all I have right now is a black T-shirt like this crew sweatshirt and a white T-shirt like this crew sweatshirt, but it's white, and uh, it's this, this is in blue. Um, you can check out www.dinohalsey.bigcartel.com and I've got stickers and t-shirts right now available. So if you want to help support the channel, uh, this show, um, my travels, my career in paddling, definitely you can go to bigcartel.com and, um, help me out. And I, if you do, I greatly appreciate it. If not, no big deal. Um, check out all my other, uh, social media. I definitely use Instagram and TikTok, Facebook, uh, Twitter, um, and YouTube. Um, I try and post on YouTube, you know, every so often, you know, um, when it comes to these podcasts, not as much cause it takes a little bit more, but I, I'm going to do it more. Um, but I definitely post on Instagram and Facebook every, uh, every other day, pretty much pretty frequently every other day I try to do. Um, and so you can check me out at, uh, at Dino dash Halsey on Instagram. Um, look up Dino Halsey on Facebook. There's actually two accounts, but look for the, uh, picture that says Dino life on water. 
It's a picture of like an American flag on the middle of it. That is my Facebook that I use all the time. Uh, check me out on Facebook and Instagram. Come say hi. If you're on Twitter, same thing, Dino Halsey. Um, look me up on there. And TikTok, I believe it's at Dino Halsey too. Um, I try and post videos on there um, every other day. You know, every other day, every third, every second, every three days, um, you know, of my adventures and what I'm doing. Actually, right now, I should have got something to drink right now. Um, I've been posting a lot of weightlifting videos. I've been in the gym now for three weeks, three days a week, and um, I'm feeling better and better every day. I've actually lost a little bit of weight, and I feel stronger, and I'm really looking forward to the 2024 panel season. Um the reason I'm posting so many weightlifting videos right now is because it's frozen and I'm not on the water. So I'm not just going to sit at home. I'd rather work on getting stronger for the paddle season. So that's why I'm posting weightlifting videos. Not to mention if you're looking for things to do to work out, you know, like exercises to do, or you're not sure, watch some of my videos on YouTube. I've done a handful of exercises, probably 10, 12 different ones, maybe more than that. All great workouts, all great things you can do to strengthen your body. And um, so definitely check out um, Dino, Hulls, or Dino Life on Water on the, on this channel. You uh, There's plenty of stuff you can watch, and it will help you. With that being said, I appreciate every one of you. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for um, watching this video. If you're watching right now, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, please. Um, Continue to watch. If you have questions or comments or want to ask me anything, feel free to do so um, in the comments or you can um, hit me up on one of the social medias and message me. Um, if you want to email me, it's dinohalsey77 at gmail.com. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions about merchandise, um, exercising, um, Beaches I may have been to, questions about paddleboarding, just anything in general, feel free to always email me or, uh, like I said, message me on um, social media. Also, if you have any questions about merch uh, from the Big Cartel site, dinohalsey.bigcartel.com, um, email me, message me. Um, I'd be happy to work out a deal with you if you want more than one shirt, if you want multiple shirts, if you want just stickers, I will definitely work out a deal with you if you need one so um again thanks for watching have a great weekend stay safe and i will see you next podcast thank you so much bye, -bye.